We're going to take a quick look at information processing theory. It is based on the idea that humans process the information they receive rather than merely responding to stimuli. Within this model, humans are routinely compared to computers. This comparison is used as a means of better understanding the way information is processed and stored in the human mind. Wait, wait. You're overanalyzing data. According to the standard information processing model for mental development, the mind's machinery includes attention mechanisms for bringing information in, also known as your senses, short-term or working memory for actively manipulating information, and long-term memory for passively holding information so it can be used in the future. But what would it look like? Let's explore this further. In James Cameron's Terminator 2, we get a glimpse of what information processing might look like through the eyes of Arnold Schwarzenegger's Terminator machine. Although human on the outside, the Terminator's mind is a computer. It uses its senses to receive information, sends it to its CPU for working memory manipulation, then cross-references that with its knowledge stored in its hard drive. Let's slow down the Terminator's approach to the bar. His eyes see the motorcycles. His computerized brain is able to retrieve the stored information about the bikes, and his working memory is able to calculate if his bike would suit his purpose. Let's look at information processing theory from a real-world example. You go to an amusement park. Your senses send all the information to your working memory so you can have a great time. Then it is stored in your long-term memory so you can tell all your friends about the great trip you had to the fair. But as you get older, you stop thinking about your trip and the memory starts to fade. This is called decay. Soon you will remember very little about your trip that you were once able to recall so vividly. Now we are going to do something extremely fun. In a classroom setting, students will receive information through their senses, namely eyes and ears. Yes. They will process the information and be able to work on the material in class. Then, when it comes time for a test, they will retrieve the stored information, and the teacher will use that for assessment. It might be a tumor. It's not a tumor. It's not a tumor at all. It's called... So what can teachers do to help students when using information processing theory? First, tell them how the brain works. They are more likely to be engaged in their learning if they know how it works. They will also be more likely to study to prevent decay, and that will lead to higher test scores. You lack discipline. Secondly, try to stimulate their senses. Allow them to touch and taste and smell the material that you are trying to pass on. This will help them form solid, long-term memories that they can recall years from now. Too much lecturing will cause your students to drift off. Switch it up a bit. Yeah. Good, now we're having fun. C, D. Lastly, don't wait too long for that test. The longer you wait to test them, the more time you have allowed for their memories to decay. Three weeks we've been talking about the Platt Amendment. What are you people? On dope? Thanks for watching, and good luck using information processing theory in your classroom.